After an incredibly rich and complex history dating far back into the 20th century, rallying had finally made it to the 21st century. The Japanese had come along and revolutionised the whole idea of what a rally car was to be, and the 90s had been the stage for a modern day Japanese invasion. But there were other changes too. The introduction of other championships like the 2 litre cup and more importantly the implementation of the new rule set ironically called the WRC, but in this case it stood for the World Rally Car. This set of rules, as well as limiting engine displacement to 2 litres, allowing 4 wheel drive and forced induction and a whole host of gearbox and body limitations, also mandated that manufacturers were now no longer obliged to build homologation specials which had been part of the WRC for decades. They could just take a car, fit it with all the bells and whistles of the rallying world and set it out on the dirt. It was a much more simple and overall cheaper endeavour than the preceding Group A. The final car homologated under the Group A rule set was the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6 which last competed in 2001. This all seemed like a massive change, and in truth it was. After being outed by the Japanese in the early 90s, the European manufacturers realised that without the binding contract of homologation specials, they were free to return, bringing with them some furious little monsters. One of the biggest of course was Peugeot, returning in 1999 after 13 years of absence following their duology of wins in the Group B era. This time however, their weapon of choice was the Peugeot 206. WRC based off, you guessed it, the Peugeot 206. It made 300 brake horsepower from the 2 litre inline 4 and that phrase will become played out very quickly as because of the tighter world rally car rules manufacturers were severely limited by what power they could output meaning that 2 litres and around 300 brake horsepower became a bit of a norm. A shaky start was rectified quickly as Peugeot took both the drivers and manufacturers title in the 2000 season with the team pulling comfortably ahead of Ford and Subaru. The driver who took the other title was Finnish pilot Marcus Gronholm, breaking Tommy Mackinen's streak of four wins for Mitsubishi. Gronholm was considered a late bloomer for the sport, not becoming a factory driver until his 30s when he joined Peugeot. After just one year with them, he was able to take his first driver's title and lead Peugeot to their manufacturer's title. 2001 was another Peugeot year when they were able to secure their second manufacturer's title. However, the driver's title was instead taken by Brit Richard Burns racing for Subaru and coincidentally in second was other British racing legend Colin McRae who continued to race for Ford at this point who in further coincidence came second in the manufacturer's championship themselves. Richard Burns, quite like McRae, became a British rallying legend, not only for his driver's title, but also for helping both Mitsubishi and Peugeot earn their retrospective constructor's titles. He would also go on to give advice for and feature in what is widely regarded as one of the all-time best rallying games ever produced. 2002 would then put Peugeot among other hat-trick legends like Lancia and Subaru as they gained their third consecutive win for a third time relegating Ford to second and Gronholm picked up his second and final driver's title. It was apparent for the first time since 1992 the Japanese would not at the top. Peugeot, with some great help for some great drivers like the aforementioned Gronholm, Gilles Panisi and Francois Delacour had snatched the baton. But it's not like Peugeot was the only new titan of 21st century rally sport. Others too had begun to emerge. In 2003, Skoda replaced their aging Octavia WRC with the smaller Fabia WRC, which seemed much more well suited to the new world. Hyundai had debuted their brand new Accent WRC, which ended up performing moderately well, and the Japanese were also modernising their representatives. Subaru introduced the first big change to the Impreza since it debuted in the early 90s with the brand new Subaru WRC 2001, sporting the new shape nicknamed the Bug Eye. It would go on to be quite successful, earning two driver's titles to its name. However, Peugeot's biggest competitor going into the early 2000s was fellow French manufacturer Citroën. Citroën had a more extensive competitive history in the preceding years, competing throughout the 90s with the Citroën Cesara kit car. 
When the kit car class was abolished, the Cesara WRC was born and began competing in 2001 with a 2 litre inline floor blah blah blah, you get the picture. Despite a rocky first few years struggling to keep up with the 206, 2003 was the year where the Cesaro was finally able to triumph due to a combination of increased competitiveness and the quickly aging 206 struggling to keep up. Citroën took their first manufacturer's title, but their main driver, Frenchman Sebastian Loeb, was beaten to the driver's title by Norwegian Peter Solberg, allowing Subaru their third and final driver's title. 2004 would see Citroën take their second manufacturer's title with a secure win over Ford. However, more importantly, 2004 would go on to be remembered as the apparent beginning of Loeb's reign with his first of many driver's titles, a number which will be withheld for the moment. So where did this young Frenchman find his footing? Well, originally Loeb had been a gymnast before moving into motorsports. This appeared to be a good choice as he seemed to be a born natural from the moment he stepped foot in a race car. He first competed in the Citroen Saxo Trophy Series, winning in 1999, at which point the boss of the Citroen World Rally team noticed Loeb's talents and entered him into the 2001 Junior World Rally Championship, where Loeb took the trophy by winning a landslide 5 out of the 6 events in his Citroen Saxo. The only reason he didn't win the 6th event, the San Remo, was because he was entered for that specific stage into the full World Rally Championship where he came an astonishing 2nd, only being beaten by true tarmac veteran Gilles Panisi. Remember, he was only 27 at the time. Loeb had a fantastic start to his career, and it was nowhere near finished yet. Backtracking for just a second, the Junior World Rally Championship was first contested in 2001, however for the first year it was known as the FIA Super 1600 Drivers Championship, the JWRC name being introduced in 2002. The JWRC is identical in most ways to the WRC, the main difference is being a much shorter season, by comparison the 2001 WRC had 14 rounds while the JWRC had only 6. Secondly, all cars were identical in model, power and everything else, which were serviced under contract. While this all seems rather pointless at face value, the overall cheaper and less daunting nature of the JWRC means that it's an excellent stepping stone for young and aspiring rally drivers, who perhaps one day wish to compete in the proper WRC. The Junior wasn't the only new championship the FIA introduced in the early 2000s. A year after, in 2002, the Production World Rally Championship, also known as the PWRC, was brought to life. Now, technically, it wasn't new. With the reorganisation of motorsports after the 1986 season, the WRC was fought in the Group A class. However, the FIA also ran the Cup for Production Rally Drivers, which was fought in the Group N class. In 2002, the FIA renamed it to the Production World Rally Championship, hence giving it the WRC status. Compared to the Group A and WRC cars, Group N motors were much closer if not the exact same as what you could buy in the showroom straight from manufacturers, hence the nickname Showroom Class. Classic competitors would be the likes of the Subaru Impreza WRX and the Renault 5 Turbo. Now obviously, all of these old and new championships had to be raced in some sort of order. 2002 makes for a good case study. This year, all 14 rounds of the WRC also had one of the other championships as a support class. Therefore, at any one event you go to, you would find both the WRC racing and either the JWRC or the PWRC racing. The Junior was raced at 6 rounds, therefore the production was raced at 8 rounds. It may sound incredibly confusing, but this was just another stage in the evolution and refinement of the World Rally Championship. Almost overnight, the Japanese had appeared to completely lose their stronghold on the WRC, and the French took centre stage, completely dominating the early 2000s. With a new century well underway, the world of rally sport had perhaps seen the biggest changes since the Group B era, or even the very beginning of the WRC itself in the early 1970s. But what was to be in store for the WRC over the next few years? Would the French mimic the Japanese and take control of the rest of the decade? Or would a new rival spring up? <laughs>